Today we're going to look at defining what a derivative is based off of familiar ideas of slope as a rate of change. So we've seen that since Algebra 1. We've studied linear functions and looked at its rate of change being constant. So we'll start off with the familiar with a time distance graph that is linear on the left, which is figure A. So as I'm describing this, if you can grab a sheet of paper, sketch out the graph, and we'll talk about what the graph is saying. So let's say that we are driving um, down a street and we notice that the, there's no traffic, we're going pretty steady, and we're going about every hour, we're going about 10 miles per hour. So you can see that as um, as we pass an hour, we've driven 10 miles, another 10 after two hours, another 10 after three hours, and then another 10 after four hours. Um, so if I were to calculate and ask you guys, can you tell me what my speed was, um, what my average rate of change was uh, as I was driving based off of figure A, we would say, well, I would calculate the slope as change of y over change in x, where the change of y represents a change in distance over change of x, which is a change in time. That little delta symbol is signifies in math change. So the change in y in this case would we be any two points. We see that the change of y is 10 over the change of x, which is 1. So Simply speaking here in units of measures that we're used to, 10 miles per hour. Okay, so that, that gives me a speed in a scenario in which our speed is constant. It's not affected by any uh, traffic or any stop signs. Um, however, it's not very realistic. So we take what we knew from Algebra 1 and we transfer that idea to what if we were hit with a graph like figure B a more real, realistic scenario in which your speed, you're going quickly, you slow down, then you're able to speed back up. And this is more in line of what we see when we're driving. And so the question is, how can I find my average speed if I'm looking at a curve that looks like this as opposed to a linear function on the left? Well, one of the things that we can reason is, well, we can still use the same idea about what our average speed was by taking the change in distance and dividing it by the change in time. So this part of it doesn't change. The question, though, is how can I find, if I look down at my clock as I'm driving, how fast I'm driving after, say, two hours? This is some the idea of an instantaneous speed. So if you're looking at your speedometer, that speedometer gives you an instantaneous speed. So that you can see the instantaneous speed is changing. And is there a way for me to identify what that speed is given a curve that looks like this, as opposed to if it's a constant rate of change, I can make a prediction about what that speed is. Um, so we're gonna use the idea of the slope of what we call a secant line. And a secant line simply is two points that we connect and we draw a line through and we find the slope of that secant line. So this is something that we've explored and done in our previous classes. Um, so in pre-calc honors, you might have done something similar. So I'll start with uh, how would you find the average rate of change or your average speed given a function? So let's do a little bit of review. Let's say you're looking at a figure. Uh, let's take a look at A representative function so let's take a look at y equals x squared representing distance traveled over time so when I'm looking at this curve we all know what it looks like time is only positive in the first quadrant so we'll begin with, uh, let me redraw that line. We'll begin with plotting y equals x squared in the first quadrant only because we know that our distance and time must be positive. So at 
two, it's four. So this curve represents my time, one unit of measure, two unit of measure, and my distance. So two, or let's let's call this one, two, three, four. And the question is, what is my average speed? from starting time, which we'll assume is zero, to three hours after I started, after start time. So if I'm calculating average speed, what I'm going to do is find the total distance that I traveled. So let's go ahead and trace that line that I'm finding the slope of. So this is my start time. This is my after three hours. So this is my end time. Hmm. Let's uh, plot a point all the way up higher. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We know it passes at through three, nine. And I'll extend this graph to go a little bit further here. And then, so in three units of time, we've gone from the first yellow dot, the start time, to now this dot up on top. So if I were to draw a line that connects those two points to show where I started and where I ended, let's see, I'll do my best to draw a straight line here. All right, so that line is called my secant line. Okay, so a secant line is any two points that, or a line that passes through any two points on a curve. And so if I use that start and end time uh, point to then calculate my average speed, I would have that my average speed is the change in y over the change in time. So the change in y represents my change in distance. So my change in distance in this case is my y values. So nine minus zero over a unit of measure of time of three minus zero. And so let's assume it's miles per hour. Um, if we calculate that, we then get three miles per hour. So from that graph, we can conclude that over the course of um, this travel, I measured about a three miles per hour average speed. So what I just graphed was the slope of the secant line. And so I can always use the slope of the secant line to find average speed, but the question is how do I find instantaneous speed?